so yeah nice to meet you guys here uh, i hope you guys uh have a good night today yeah good dinner things like that uh, i'm not sure i think majority people here are all from uh, gmt plus eight or plus seven okay yeah so just to introduce myself a little bit oh no what are we covering in this consultancy space so we will talk a little bit on history and evolution of term 1920 2021 and 21 22 about isaac in malaysia uh, you get to know more about what's the curve of the organization which would be very helpful for you to work on like your understanding towards uh, this entity and also what is happening in this term uh, for you to understand further on what are we doing right now uh, what are we still in progress right now and we will have more space for q a to clarify further because it would definitely it will be a lot of information uh, about as in malaysia today uh, but uh, i will just keep it as simple as possible and if there's a lot of questions that you wish to understand further then uh, you can actually ask me by the end of the consultancy space as well okay all right so uh, I think uh, just an introduction about me, uh, I'm Yi Jie, so I'm the current MCP of ISA in Malaysia. Uh, my previous experience, I was always in my, the product team, uh, IGV, OGV, uh, even in LCs as well. And at the same time, uh, I was also, uh, I mean, I love marketing a lot, especially product marketing. So I was always in uh, having a, uh, some specialized knowledge uh, when I was doing IGV and OGV uh, about marketing as well. So outside of MCP, so I'm actually a more yellow kind of person, adventurous. I love to try a lot of new activities like sports. So uh, I don't know, MC experience led me to figure out all these things because uh, I get to learn more. To, I, I can do a lot more things uh, when I'm in MC comparing to when I'm in uni. I'm not sure why, maybe it's a way that, you know, I find it fun and relieving uh, my stress, a uh, place where I can release my energy, things like that. Okay, so that's just a introduction about me nothing special about me um unless you apply and then you will see me in transition okay <laughs> just kidding all right so yeah so i think uh just to talk a little bit of isaac malaysia so before we talk about isaac in malaysia uh, for your information isaac in malaysia started since uh, established since 1968 so it has been 55 years that isaac in malaysia exists uh, after we got isaac uh, things like that and it's actually a very old entity and also an entity that is actually quite big as well uh, currently we have 11 lcs for now and three expansions units uh, back then we do have until 13 lcs as well so that was before 2019 uh, we actually uh, one of the key player of uh, exchange program in asia pacific region uh, especially for our incoming global volunteer so we host a lot of EPs back then when we were running exchange uh, and also uh, we did send a lot of people to go go out from Malaysia as well yeah but uh, frankly speaking IGV was actually one of the biggest uh, and also strongest uh, product in ISA in Malaysia so I will be I wouldn't talk a little bit more about uh, before 2019 but just showing you good figure you can get to know uh, we are actually growing uh, term by term since 2016 uh, 2017 and 2018 and 2019 so for information i joined in during 2017 which is actually uh, the moment where uh, we focus a lot on driving exchange and the next year i I'm one of the generations that are uh, being I mean, being shaped as in growing exchanges, uh, double growth, things like that. So we can see in 2018, when I become a team leader, I started to, you know, uh, very into, very into uh, running exchanges, believing about what is the impact because of exchange, things like that. It was really, really great back then uh, to, to be able to run for exchange. Even until right now, I'm still like, you know, um, deep, deep down my heart. I love exchange a lot. I am very, very connected towards why exchange need to happen in Isaac and Malaysia, for example. Yeah, um, that's the stories before 2019. So even during 2019, because we were actually growing, if you can see from 17, 18 to 18, 19, we grow a lot. And that was the time that we actually got global award in uh, our IPM, uh, which is one of the pres international president meeting. Uh, I think that was in Russia, and then uh, we got a we got a finance award, 
and we also got IR award which is either in Malaysia and either in MOC so uh, because we have to grow a lot of exchange right so we really really do, do a lot of IR uh, we have our key IR in AP region MOC Vietnam and also uh, Indonesia as well so these three are our key IR partners back then when we were actually running exchange yep so that was a little bit on like you know the very great history of Isa in Malaysia I was part of this generation when I see the entity getting award uh, and also how uh, we are actually uh, like how we are actually uh, showing together at, at the same time uh, very united entity uh, back then uh, when I was in LC uh, when I'm actually looking into uh, how MC is actually presenting their direction and vision about Isaac in Malaysia it makes me feel very connected towards like uh, what I believe Isaac can do until right now uh, becoming an MC MCP so uh, that's a little bit uh, recognition that we have back then and it's also something that I still feel very proud of even when I'm standing in regional or global plenary about what ISA in Malaysia has achieved and what we are continuing from that generation until right now. So talking about generations, so uh, one thing that me personally believe and also I think I take this as when I was in LCEB uh, management team until right now, I believe three years impact. So one how one year would actually in a affect and impacted three years later on right all the success you can see across three years later after your term so that's why uh, when we talk about history and evolutions we will always talk about three years because you will only see like the evolutions and the key trend across the year uh, starting from that term that actually make an impact right or make a decision of change yeah because every year every mc term every of the generation we are making decisions for the organization uh, there is no good or bad you know uh decisions being made it's just on how the say positively and negatively impacted the organization so talking about mc 1920 uh we have uh the whole team called MC Beyond. Uh, it, it is the it was the year of taking action that mattered. Yeah. Because uh this was the year, if you still remember, in 1819, we have already going exchange, right? So we wouldn't ever want to aim for drop. So we want to aim for sustainability, we want to growth by continuity. So this was the MC team born. Uh there, there were a lot of internationals in this team. Is I, I would say it's like a biggest international MC team ever uh, after 15-16 so once we have 15-16 it's also a lot of internationals uh, from AP, Europe and even America's region right so in this term we do have people coming MC from in Costa Rica, MC Morocco, uh, Vietnam and also Hong Kong and yeah, I think many are the, these four entities and remaining are all locals and also some internationals as well that is studying in Malaysia. Yeah, so this was the time that is very happy. Everyone wants to, you know, grow exchange, blah, blah, blah. And we are going to grow sustainably. This was a very ambitious time. So uh, they were the time that want to de develop leadership through exchange by acting real to grow sustainably and they are, were the one generations that standing on the shoulder of giants because have the the foundation have been built since 1617 until today that they actually can ride on the shrines of what Isaac in Malaysia has did and continue uh, in their terms as well so with that their legacy they put a lot of uh, focus into competency building and also marketing and sales because we want to go for product and because of exchange uh, one of the key most important thing to make the product sustainable and organization to be sustainable will be legalities because we were growing for exchange until you know uh, we might not able to go into control right when there is a huge volume of exchange especially we are doing border related with border immigration so legality is one of one of their top priority by that period of time so before COVID-19 very happy 
we got to you know uh, penetrate our market develop our market because we have to grow with that certain goal like imagine you have to run for 3000 realizations right then the most important thing is for us to and we we need to have ex- enough market right so this was the term that started developing and penetrating new markets and also at the same time they were really very really focusing on b2c marketing and sales competency even when i was in lc uh, i received a lot of trainings about b2c so personally for me that's also the reason why i i, I like it and also why i'm good at b2c marketing yep and at the same time we work a lot on legalities because of visa and tax exemption we really want to work on visa to ensure that uh, our EPs, so which is like an international volunteers, uh, they won't get to stuck around the immigration things like that. And there were the uh, generation that focused a lot on lead, which is facilitation, reflection, talk a lot on, about Isaac value, what kind of values and qualities that we want to see in our membership. And eventually, uh, in order for us to grow to certain number of the exchange numbers uh, we also put a lot more resources in expansion so back then we still have a lot of hr pipeline finances that we can invest into expansion so that they can become a bigger lc so that we can grow number of exchange as well but however um the half, half of their term is very sad that they face covid 19 so um all of the operation have to be stopped uh, during that period of time and we have to re- manage like the break uh, EP uh, realization uh, that we actually approve all the EPs ready so it's huge uh, imagine you ha- we have like 300 to 400 EP to actually break it right break approval break realizations things like that and and th- in order for us to not doing anything when the world actually need leadership by that period of time uh, what Isaac ch- in Malaysia choose to do is to continue what we are good at, which is volunteering for the social cause, uh, which is we initiated the virtual volunteer even during pandemic period of time, not to left out our members doing nothing in Isaac, but at the same time believing that what is what why leadership is matters and what we as a young youth organization can do. And because of virtual volunteer, we have to start adapting all of the operations into digital. Digitalization was the things that, you know, uh, as, especially in Isaiah Malaysia, is not really good at even before that. We were really good in physical execution, so this thing. So this was the time that we start building digital marketing, running virtual conferences to co- engage our members. And, else, and at the same time, we managed COVID-19 risk as well and that was also the time that some certain artists faced into financial crisis because they wouldn't able to run the strength of the organ the strength the key strength of the product which is gv right so uh, artists uh, start to have uh, don't have income coming in things like that and they have their reserves are depleting things like that so and at the same time uh, covid 19 uh, we were also the gen that was also the generation that beat for ic uh, before COVID, so we were planning to host IC twenty twenty, uh, in Malaysia as well. So here's some achievement data that you can see, and uh, which is OGV the 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 begin. I mean the top part is actually exchange, and the bottom part is virtual volunteer, which is kind of like a local initiative that we used to do, uh, to host like you know those EP that they cannot cannot run for realization. So. Uh, frankly speaking, to sum up this entire whole generations and also what they have done, uh, what I really, really uh, inspired was the resiliency that they have and also how fast is an organization that can change in within three months time to run a virtual volunteer initiative and start to rebuilding all the digital skill set and competency by that period of time yeah that was very impressive uh, even until right now I, I i was also really inspired with what other actions that they have taken and coming to mc 2021 which is they call that uh, mc core so this was also a very international team uh they have one uh isaac of uh, one from Isaac in Myanmar, uh, I think around two people from Isaac in Vietnam, and then one people from Isaac in Hong Kong, which is the MCPs from Isaac, was from Isaac in Hong Kong as well. So uh, it was the year of uh, 
that we talk a lot more about Isaac Essence, which is sticking back to the core of the organization. Yeah, so this was the time that we started a lot of like local initiative. Uh, we revised our Isaac in Malaysia culture as well, the membership behavior that we want to see, which is resilient, uh, ownership, and also innovative. And it continues until today. And also we do have like a lot of initiatives going on. So I will be sharing right now. So um, because of COVID-19, uh, a lot of people start questioning about when Isaac is no longer running exchange, is Isaac relevant or not? Right. So uh, this was the time that uh, the generation of the MC that actually drive a lot about no matter Isaac is doing exchange or not, we are still a leadership organization. We do, we choose to do what is matters for the uh, country and for the world. So they are the generation that coming from global pandemic outbreak. That's why they call that some MC core, where we believe that no matter when and what kind of situation, what we do, the core of this organization still matter, which is peace and fulfillment of humankind's potential. And, and with that, they choose the battle of sustainability and relevance in the whole uh, term and make a sustainable decision for the organization. So what they want to do, as simple as they just wish to achieve financial sustainability between MC and LC, where this was the term that people are very driven with sustainability, talking about financial resources uh, in uh, both MC and LC and level, and we are trying to find as much as the revenues that we can do uh, in order to sustain the whole organization as well. And also with that, we want to achieve active membership despite it was a virtual engagement so and also at the same time this was also the time that we started to go into a new world which is partnership yeah so i will be sharing a little bit more so for recall back from 1920 right what we continue from them is that virtual volunteer that we they actually innovated to adapt towards like um, the COVID situation and we continue it but we revise the entire business model and we start to charge it for pricing for information for previously we didn't charge pricing it would because it was just a test run and also it's a relatively very new things in the whole whole era as well right like when we talk about new norm things like that so we start to have our uh, local virtual volunteer pricing so for information by that period of time all of our exchange product no longer able to run and a lot of uh, globally we are focusing into engage with isaac right so people are running events people are doing their own entity initiative so either in malaysia our own entity initiative local virtual volunteer and we want to make sure that both lc and mc are sustained so we start to uh, revive, we start to have a pricing model for local virtual volunteer. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, not to only solely depending on one key product, right? So not only focusing on one revenues. So we started to build up our B2B sales. And this was also the time that where all of the, the entire organization is also starting to uh, drive into BD, uh, which is uh, sales, right? So we do have in within one year period of time, we have three sales portfolio developed out as well. So at the same time, this was also one of the biggest uh, move in Isaac in Malaysia, which is the change, which is marketing centralization. Because of the growth, we need to grow digital marketing and we can no longer have a lot of branches and people will start confusing about the branding in digital presence of Isaac in Malaysia. So we decided to centralize the whole marketing channel and at the same time, uh, we do have LCs that start to have new functions. So for example, OGTA and Engage with Isaac, which is an event-based like you speak forum. So there will still function like OGV, IGV that is solely working on local virtual volunteer. But at the same time, we have new function, which is Engage with Isaac, which is event-based. And at the same time, we sadly, we have one LC that are unable to sustain because of their pipeline issue. Because we go into virtual engagement the biggest challenge for an organization uh, it, by COVID period of time is that the engagement between uh, the people in the organization, right? So that was a huge impact towards this LC. That's why the LC also gets disbanded. And then at the same time, um, we focus a lot on virtual training workshops, sales and marketing, facilitation, especially how to facilitate a virtual team experience. And OGTA expansion, we do develop new our own initiative with local talent, but uh, 
unfortunately by the end of the day we wouldn't able to kick start it because of uh, mc capacity as well and at the same time we have a new national behavior uh, in our organization in our entity resilient ownership innovative that i mentioned just now and also we revised a lot of our legalities because of covid19 uh, compliance towards the covid19 risk uh, for example, refunding policies, all those things as well uh, to ensure the organization's sustainability. And we emphasize a lot of ISAC essence uh, through a lot of touch points, commission meetings, uh, O2O, uh, conferences, virtual conferences, things like that. Because we want people to understand why we are still here and what are we doing and why leadership matters in this period of time. And at the same time, if you still remember, we bid for the IC, but because of the uncertainties of COVID, we do not know when COVID will end. And that's why we decided to stop the entire IC operations and we start to deplete in terms of financial reserve because we have to pay for the cost of it because of con cancellation of international conference. So it was a huge impact towards our financial even at this period of time where people are rebuilding financial reserve, right? So uh, that was the impact. But at the same time, they did a lot of innovations in terms of virtual initiatives to keep the as in Malaysia membership uh, engaged. And I would say I was really inspired by this turn is also because of their resiliency in keeping virtual engagement there. It's, it's very, very hard to keep virtual engagement. You do not know what is happening behind the screen but they managed to keep 500 memberships still active in virtual period of time and yeah so this was a little bit more on like you know the achievements that they have done uh, even during pandemic uh, the entire whole mc term was virtual sadly for that even for internationals because they couldn't able to travel to malaysia as well but still a little bit lucky that they were like half of the mc team are local and they get able to actually meet up physically as well in a short period of time yeah so that was a big story and coming by here was the my my last term when i was in mcvp which is mc 21 22 mc blossom so we call ourselves as a year of to amplifying impact and externally relevant so if you see this entire whole team is all a local malaysian uh and uh there was only one vietnamese uh, mc uh, which was the return MC as well called Julie and then uh, if you see we have very strong Vietnamese MC pipeline as well yeah uh, we do have Indonesia back then in 17, 18, 18, 19 that two terms I think even before that yeah from 2015 until 2018 is very strong from Indonesia yeah so um, uh, frankly speaking uh, this also the generation this MC term generation was the LC generation from MC 1819. So we are all three years later become MC when we were in LC and get inspired about what MC has did and eventually we become MC. We are all the same batches of the people that get recruited at the same time. So that was a fact about this team. Yeah, so coming here, uh, we do continue what has come what had done in 2021 MC term which is MC core which is the local virtual volunteer but we rebrand it and we start to do virtual professional program which is IGTA that we call it right now in engage with Isaac so we are continuing a lot of things from that term to this term but what we want to look into here is that people start to recognize Isaac uh, the exact as a leadership development platform and also recognize the impact that we are actually creating to our community and we also we start to want to build up the value aligned partnership that people believe the leadership qualities that we are building in the young people and people believe what Isaac is doing uh, which is our partners as well so here was the time that we have a lot of uh, revising about new pricing and adapting towards the new change uh, which is physical so it was also the time that we people start to talk about post pandemic uh, endemic uh, people want to go back to physical engagement because it was very draining to do things virtually people cannot have social connections so we write on that trend that we start uh, to build up a little bit more about physical engagement in our operations or even with our membership and also at the same time, this was the entire whole year that we talked a lot more about B2B grants, 
B to B marketing, B to B partnerships, e- between even in national and LC level as well. Yeah, and in our conference, we talk a a lot more about how can we build the people to be future leaders as well. So we focus a lot on skill set building, like design thinking, innovations, all those uh, re- uh, re- all those uh, um, future skills that is needed for young people, which is our membership. And we do a lot of project innovations to make sure that uh, our projects are relevant for the community, especially in the very fast changing environment. Like there are a lot of social issues keep on happening, right? Like for example, food shortage, food security, uh, food waste, educational, the impact of COVID-19 towards education, all those things. That was also all the things that uh, we were writing on right now to work on that. And also at the same time, uh, growing of uh, national partnerships, because if you see in 2021, we start building up our national partnerships and we continue to do that to sustain our organization and also to uh, amplify whatever that we did, what we want to do, right, uh, with the partners as well. And also at the same time, because we do have like the sunk cost that we are playing, so we start to realize that finances in in national level is start going into alarming so we do revise our finance model based on our entity performance and also we do have a huge debt that we need to cover by that period of time at the same time that we also have inconsistent revenues coming in as well so we are trying to find a lot of way that we can do with bd uh, in this year and we really talk a lot on b2b marketing B- b2b competencies in both national lc level and yeah, we also become the pioneer of MXP, which is either in Malaysia. We decided to pilot this entire program because it was also very relevant for us where uh, we start to realize people are burning out, people don't feel relevant and connected about ISI, they don't enjoy. And we want to try this product and we decided to be the first entity that tried it in, uh, when, they, when AI actually launched the MXP, which is membership product. And at the same time, uh, in order for the we are we are still running IGTA across the year, but it's just because of COVID we cannot run physical. So we turn we decided to change our portfolio into virtual prof- professional program as well. So yeah, so that was a little bit on the key achievements and non achievements that happened. So overall. We got to deliver 800 leadership experiences, which is the local volunteer that we call MYV, Malaysian Youth Volunteer. And we do have AWA event, at, like Youth Speak Forum or LC's uh, own uh, initiative, event initiative to engage with 1,000 plus of young people during that period of time. And yeah, we achieved around 100k LC sales. So here was the time that LC start to co- recover in terms of their financial health, things like that. All right. So some key focus product here that you can see. So coming by, haha, this is the my year, uh, which is also uh, what is happening right now. So when we talk about, uh, if you see across the year, the most pressing issues uh, that um, the organization is facing right now is financial. That's the first thing. And the second one will be the adapt, adapt how to adapt towards the new change, uh, new norm again. Uh, after pandemic, we go into new norm. And right now we go into another new norm again, which is going back to, you know, a normal life, uh, living with COVID, uh, which is physical movement. People start to, you know, going overseas, uh, traveling when the border is opening, things like that. Uh, that was also the second part that happening right now. And also the, uh, the last but not least is also how can we uh, have a, have the young people which is our membership they are really ready for uh what is ha- what is going to ha- uh, happen in upcoming future as well and last but not least when our partnerships are growing how can we make sure that whatever did we do is relevant for the community and relevant for what is the world need so that people able to trust us and people able to believe that uh, what Isaiah is doing, leadership is very important and they're able to support our social cause as well so here comes that the the born of this team, which is my team, MC Infinity. So why we call ourselves MC Infinity? Because we aspire to bring a long-lasting impact towards the youth, which is leadership, and grow sustainably by riding on our strengths and opportunities and break through the infinite possibilities that is uh, happening in the upcoming year. Because if you see the change that happened in 1920 until today, we were all always riding on what have been built in the past and all the key strengths that we have. 
and also the opportunities and this was the time that we want to continue to do that and at the same time ensuring that we are growing sustainably making sure that uh whatever that we do uh, is going to be last long as well and what do we want to see at the end of our term our membership are proud to be isaac girl they are proudly to say that uh, we are the isaac girl we are the young people that is going to lead the world and they are purposeful about what they are what they have experienced in isaac and they are going to implement it implement it outside of isaac as well and we want to see a future proof isaac in malaysia that really deliver the real and tangible leadership impact the leadership that is needed in the current world and what we want to see also when everyone thinks about leadership they're able to think about isaac as well so here comes like our three term three key battles that we are working on right now uh, uh some disclaimer some of the projects are still working on some of the projects are uh uh, are already done as well so for information uh, we were we pioneered mxp last term right so this term we want to improve our membership experience by writing on what we have done in the last term and which for this term we want to drive improve a membership experience and productivity at the same time so when they start to do something they learn from the experience and they develop why they are here and they eventually able to find like uh what's the what makes them want to stay and continue further to develop themselves in this organization right so in the end of the day we want to see the pipeline uh we have a strong pipeline people willing to go for higher role because they believe what they have experience and they want more right so uh we want to strengthen the M and the whole mxp implementation which is like awareness education competency in our team leaders facilitations and also strengthen the Isaac career path, be able to map out the value proposition of what Isaac career, which is, for example, each of the role, how does it fit into membership needs? For example, especially MC pipeline, like how can they utilize MC experience to actually develop themselves for their future future career as well and also last but not least is to increase more physical engagement which is to build up our entity culture to build an identity a community uh, through physical engagement with our membership for example conferences right so we just started our physical full force physical conferences uh, in this field this entire 2023 as well so moving on, uh, we are the we the second part that we are focusing right now is to youth leadership development that we want to deliver better youth leadership experiences by innovating our Isaac portfolios with our value aligned partners, right? So we want to focus by the end of the day, the all of our customers experience our product. They have said it it is good, and I'm I'm going uh and I re they really learn something and level up their leadership potential with our Isaac initiatives, which is for example Malaysian youth volunteers, things like that, and all of the initiatives that Isaac is going to do. So first thing we want to improve our physical value delivery, so that because we just started back full force physical, so a lot of membership that they still do not know how to uh run physical operations like realization and event on site and how lc can actually innovate based on like their needs right uh that was the innovation skills that we wish to build in our membership and at the same time we want to upskill our partnership portfolio trying different possibilities that we can continue our the partnership that have been built in the last two years so that we don't lose uh, our b2b partnerships uh that have been built because b2b partnership it always take years to actually build up right so that was the time uh this was the time uh in our term we want to mention long-term partnerships happen here and last but not least we are to resume our gv global volunteer so uh very happily that we just passed ogv and we are piloting the operations right now and also at the same time we are trying to comply the igv principles as well so moving on will be leadership brand positioning we want to increase our brand presence and credibility as an organization so we just centralize our marketing right so we want to continue to do that so by doing that we want to grow our digital marketing uh truth campaigns uh, so that we can ensure that all of the visitors top funnel are drive into our products and membership as well as well and also we want to uh, see uh the strong competencies of the sales and marketing so for your information we were very good in b2c sales and marketing in 1920 when we are growing for operations but by right now because there were a lot of different initiatives happening so uh we are kind of like rebuilding the entire sales and marketing competency by this period of time yep and last but not least 
we want to improve our university relations uh, in the LC level so that they know how to manage well in terms of their partnership, they know how to utilize their resources, which is universities, to actually support them in driving all of the initiative in the LCs. And with that, here are some in-progress things that we have conducted uh, in our term. We have a 100% physical mode conference already, physical engagement and operations. It seems like uh, something that is very easy before COVID-19. It is very hard for that this period of time to actually drive back what is the value of physical when people start to have, you know, realize that there are actually other values that why don't I just join virtual, right? So the reason of the whole MC team are driving physical because we realize that uh, in ISAC, what makes people connect together is about human, right? It's about people because we are the people organization. So this is a very important thing that we believe in our term that driving physical engagement, getting people connected together is what makes people believe and stay in ISAC. They start to connect with ISAC as well. And that's what we believe. And we start to run hybrid operations like we have physical and digital uh, activities combined together providing more flexibility for our customers and at the same time we successfully resume OGV so we are running it right now uh, trying to pilot the entire operations in this uh, upcoming few months and we also did a lot we also did revision on our financial model to ensure that our financial model is reflected on our current revenues performance things like that and there are a lot more still in progress in our product uh, in initiative so feel free to ask more if you want to know more detail things like that okay so just to close up everything uh, before we go into Q&A uh, every time seems like a new start yes it is a lot of things uh, previous term perhaps we can only achieve like 70% most of the time never have a strategy that can also achieve 100% uh, things like that that was a failed strategy that was a good strategy but what we are always doing is always standing on the shoulders of giant and that's what makes Isaiah in Malaysia that is strong until today uh, which is be able to survive for 55 years and uh, and thanks to the continuity uh, that give us the roots and change that also gives us the branches. We know what we can keep, we know what we need to change and that is us to actually stretch and grow uh, along the year. And personally for me, uh, have been six years in eyesight, uh, I do believe that keeping what is like what is good in eyes, uh, what is the strength of this organization and at the same time not limiting ourselves to give ourselves breakthrough on what we don't usually think of which is stepping out from Isaac bubble, being externally relevant is still very important for uh, Isaac in Malaysia as a whole. Yeah, and one last thing is also, but never ever trying to replant the tree with 55 years old, which is rebuilding everything again. Yeah, because it takes three years time. Imagine like whenever I share, you do see the evolution and trends that is actually affecting term by term and never replant it again and again. Uh, and never go in back to the same state again, things like that. Yeah, so that was just a bit uh, sharing. And just to close out everything, uh, what this entity believe in, right? I think for international, uh, it could be hard for you at the beginning to understand what is this organization, uh, what is this entity about, uh, the drive and what is what keeps us here, what makes us believe that Isaac need to exist in Malaysia, this country, uh, is actually our organizational stand, which is our entity stand. So I'm not sure other inter entity have your own stand or not. But for us, uh, as uh, Isaac in Malaysia, we believe uh, we want to contribute as uh, towards our country, which is for United Malaysia, which is a proud and action driven nation that embraces diversity and takes ownership for the better Malaysia. We want to see the entire country is really proud of who they are uh, regardless the people that stay the people that is locally made which is malaysian or even people that actually stay in malaysia and they are going to stay further in malaysia that they are feel proud to be in this country and also they take uh, actions that is matters for the country and at the same time we are actually the multicultural country as well we are very diverse and how can we embrace the diverse cities which is our key strength so that we can be united and to achieve uh, and take the ownership take care of our, of our country and make our country better and that's what Isaac wants to do which is that's what we believe about leadership is needed in this country and that's what we are contributing right now towards our country as well yep yeah, so I think that's pretty much about 
um, the history and evolution. So feel free to contact me uh, if you have any questions about histories. And then uh, there are a lot of resources that we were putting down here. So far, this is the most useful resources that you can use that I always use when I'm actually doing MC applications. Yep. So uh, I think with that, uh, I will open for Q&A. Yeah. Let me stop the recording.